Hello, it's my first review. What should I do for an intro? Uh, finger guns. Hey there, welcome to the Curry Review. Justice League. Honestly, right out of the gate, I really enjoyed the film. I'm a huge DC fan, Marvel fan too, but I grew up on both. And it was just, I had that same feeling when I watched the Avengers for the first time. Seeing all the superheroes come together and team up was just a feeling unlike no other. Um, I will say, uh, it's no spoiler, I mean, if you've seen the posters recently, Superman is by and far the best part of the movie. I was smiling throughout the whole thing. There's one part that I'm pretty sure I peed a little. The plot, yeah, it's thin, but it's an ensemble character movie about bringing a team together. The plot doesn't have to be as complex as a Christopher Nolan film. Now, there's been a lot of complaints about Steppenwolf, uh, the villain, and I could go into a lot more detail about him, but to keep this mostly spoiler-free, I won't. Um, some are saying that he's the worst comic book villain of all time, and if you hear someone say that, you should most definitely slap them in the face. Sure, his motivations are super thin, but have you seen any of the Marvel movies recently? 90% of their villains are just as thin as they focus more on the heroes in the films. I actually thought he was a pretty intimidating presence. Seeing him just jump around, take out guys left and right, not being stopped easily, that was pretty impressive, and he took on the majority of the Justice League. So I'm hoping to see him back in a future film, maybe with more expanded mythology. The film does do a good job hinting at future things to come, I will say, while also keeping it down to earth enough to where you're not going to be like, I have no idea what's going on. Make sure you stay at the end of the credits. There's a mid credit scene and a post credit scene, both of which are two of the best that I've ever seen done in a film. They got me really excited. Seeing the team come together was great. The visual effects, I heard a lot of bad things, but honestly, they were actually really good. The CGI was impressive, especially on Cyborg, who I was the most worried about. Um, his backstory uh, does not get a lot of fleshing out, uh, which kind of had me concerned because if you haven't seen Batman vs Superman, um, you won't exactly know what's going on. Um, but if you haven't seen it, then go watch it. Aquaman was one of the ones I was most looking forward to, as his name is Arthur Curry and this is the Curry Review. Shameless plug. However, he's kind of the one that gets dumped to the side a little bit more in favor of other characters. Uh, ben Affleck I thought did a pretty good job as Batman. There were parts where I felt like he was phoning it in a little bit. Uh, he maybe Ben Affleck didn't want to be in the movie as much, or he was worried about negative reaction. Uh, Gal Gadot did a great job as Wonder Woman, as always. Um, there's going to be parts of the film where she gets on your nerves, though. Ezra Miller was the standout as the Flash, though. He's hilarious. He's likable. He's charming in that like nerdy kind of way. And he really gave Grant Gustin, the CW Slash, a run for his money, and I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more of him in the future. Uh, Henry Cavill did a great job as Superman. I think this is the best we've seen of Superman so far in the DCEU, and I'm looking forward to what they do next with the character, if the film franchise has a future. There's good character moments for each one. Nobody just hogs the spotlight, which I thought was really good balancing acts because there's so many characters and storylines to juggle within the film. Um, if you don't know about the production issues about Justice League, I will tell you that uh, Zack Snyder, who did Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, uh, co-wrote Wonder Woman, and produced Suicide Squad, he had a great vision for the film, and w tragically, his daughter committed suicide back in March and stepped down as director of the film. Joss Whedon, director of the Avengers and other Marvel films, including Avengers Age of Ultron, he was kind of the Marvel guru for a while, stepped in to complete the film and did one of the most expensive reshoots in film history, which has reportedly caused the budget of this film to go up to 300 million or higher. That was concerning when it happened because a lot of people complained about Zack Snyder's vision and while it wasn't perfect, I liked that he was taking a darker, more serious approach. And we all knew the Justice League would be lighter, but I do feel like there are parts of the film where you just feel like it's the Avengers the Justice League are bigger than the Avengers. We should feel a bigger sense of triumph when they fight bad guys, you, you know what I'm saying? And late in the post-production process, Warner Brothers, the parent company that produces and owns DC, sent out a mandate for the film to be less than two hours long. So it clocked in at about an hour and 59 minutes with credits. And that's disappointing because I can think of at least five scenes that were in the trailer that aren't in the completed cut. And Zack Snyder's version, his cut of the film, was going to be nearly three hours long. So there's a missing hour of Justice League uh, 
out there that I would love to see come to Blu-ray, as well as Junkie XL, the original composer uh, for the soundtrack of Justice League, was ditched late on in favor of Danny Elfman, which I was excited about at first because he did the original Batman score, and uh, he just he did the Spider-Man score. He has some iconic stuff under his belt. But I will say the soundtrack was probably the most disappointing part of the movie. Um, it was an iconic, they used bits of the original 1970s John Williams Superman theme, bits of the original Batman theme, but those were the only parts that really stood out. And I'm curious to see what Junkie XL would have done because I really enjoyed his score in Batman vs Superman. However, now going through all these production issues and them having to cut as much as they did, I am surprised the film flowed as well as it did. You can't help but feel parts of it were rushed, however, it is a great entertaining film and I saw it twice actually and I was just smiling the whole time. It's good to see all these characters finally come together on the big screen. Superman has never been better and um, there's some really awesome geek out moments. So if you're a DC fan, uh, keep your eye out and if you're just a regular movie goer, um, I think you'll enjoy it too. But give it a chance. Give all these DC films a chance. Don't compare them to Marvel. Let them be their own thing. So all in all, I thought Justice League was a very solid, entertaining popcorn superhero film with some great character moments um, that I could appreciate as a comic book fan who knows the deep lore and all that. And just so you know, for the future, I will be doing the IMDB scoring system for my reviews. So what that means is that it's on a scale from one to 10, but it's either one, two, six, seven, nine, or 10. There's no 0.5s, no 0.75s, no random 0.3s looking at you, IGN. The reason I'm doing that is because uh, IMDb lets anyone rank their films, uh, the average moviegoer, and that's who these reviews are for, so I'm going to be doing that. And I give Justice League a 7 out of 10. For more reviews coming soon, and more nerdy stuff possibly in the future, subscribe to Kernator 1, be on the lookout for other Kernator production shorts, and we'll see you soon.